Hey friends, welcome back. We got a little quickie video here on Beam Designs. Some tips and some tricks how to save you a little bit of time when you're doing these beam design problems, okay? So one of the things that we do, especially when we're talking about wide flange beams, number, number one, what is a wide flange beam? Well, you already know. That's just a Spanish, Spanish for I-beam, okay? That's right, that's a wide flange beam. Remember, on our beams, <clears throat> this is called the flange, and this is called the web, okay? But a wide flange beam is nothing more than an I-beam. One of the things that we have to do when we're designing a beam, when we're being engineers, okay, is pick out, like from a, from a parts list, Here's a hundred different styles of I-beams. Which one do you want, Mr. Engineer? Well, let me do some calculating and I'll tell you which I-beam, which wide flange beam I need. So one of the things that we do to calculate which one of those beams we're gonna need is calculate something called the section modulus, okay? So it's a geometric property of a beam's cross section used in the design of beams, which is what we're doing here, right? Okay, now you might see one of these two equations. The first equation, man, is totally sick, man. Okay, it's the sick equation. The second one is, is M max, bending moment max, divided by sigma allowable. Now this, which one of these am I gonna use? Well, it depends on which information I have. If I know about the loaded beam, I know what the load is, then I can do a shear moment diagram and I can calculate M max. Now sigma allowable, I can look that up for steel, right? So that's a look em up. That's calculated if I know the load. Now maybe I know something about the beam's cross section, what it looks like, and I have to calculate off of that, then this equation here might be a little more helpful. Because you remember these guys, right? I, what is I? For a rectangular beam, right? I would be 1 12th B H cubed, right? And divide that by C. And what is C? C is the distance from the neutral axis to the top. So that would be half of the height. That would be H divided by two, okay? Which is same as 2 over h, right? If I divide by the reciprocal, right? It's the same as multiply by the reciprocal there. Divide by a fraction, brother. So what do I get? That cancels in there, goes six times, that goes there. So this whole thing would equal 1 sixth bh squared. And that right there would be my uh, s value for a rectangular beam. So it's pretty easy to calculate. Now, another little side note, watch this. Watch what happens here, s, s, so I, C, uh, whoop, 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 equals, gosh, what are we doing here, Hanson? I divided by C equals M divided by sigma. Let's move sigma to the other side. Sigma equals, and then put that over there. M, C, oh my gosh. Okay, are you seeing where that came from? That's our old beam bending equation, the flexure formula, okay? So these, these values S, this section modulus, when we calculate this, that allows us to go to these wide flange beam tables and look at all the different choices of I-beam and say, there's the one we need because that's the section modulus I need right there, right? And it allows us to select whatever beam. Now stay tuned for the next video. We're gonna do just that. We're gonna use all of these tips and tricks to go select one of these beams, even these tricks over here, okay? So that is, uh, that's what we use the section modulus for. It's a geometric property of the beam. Now this is gonna be in like inches cubed or millimeters cubed. It is not a volume, right? Just like Q, right? Remember we did Q? Q was millimeters cubed, but it's not a volume. It represents the geometric properties of the cross section, okay? So what are these two guys over here? Now, when you're calculating tau for any beam, you want to get the maximum tau, right? Where is tau the maximum? Well, you need to know where, you know, need to know where V is maximum. 
And of course, we can do that with the shear moment diagram, right? But let's say that you're in a hurry and you don't have time to do a shear moment diagram. Are there any shortcuts? This works for every beam, okay? You can always go back to this, okay? Number one, if you have a rectangular beam, all right, just this, bloop, 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 okay? A rectangular beam. You can just use 1.5V times A. And, well, wait a minute, that's just for average, you know? Because the stress across there is zero at the outside and maximum in the middle and zero again, right? That's what the stress looks like, right? And if I do average, doesn't average get me somewhere in there? Yeah, it does. That's exactly what V over A gets you. But if you multiply it by 1.5, it gets you really close to that maximum value only on rectangular beams. It only works on the rectangular beams, okay? So it's a shortcut. Now, you can still go back and you can do VQ over IT and get it exactly to the nuts, whatever it is, right? But this will get you like really close. And so this is a shortcut method that we use a lot in engineering, okay? And then the next shortcut is for these guys, for wide flange beams. Again, you can do VQ over IT. Now, I, it's a little bit hard to calculate because these beams aren't really rectangles. I mean, this, the flanges on these things in real life kind of tapers off on the end like this. It's kind of rounded. This in here on this web has a little fillet right there and right there, right? So, you know, and a lot of the problems that we do in mechanics and materials, we simplify and say, ah, rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. Well, it's really not. So the correct eye is sometimes a little hard to come up with. Now, on all the manufacturer's specifications, like I said, that parts list of all those wide flange beams, the real eye will be given on that table. But a way that you can kind of shortcut for where is where is tau, the very maximum, you can use this trick, V over A, which you'd think, oh, wait a minute, V over A, I have to use the cross-sectional area of this thing. The V is just your shear force. That's normal shear force, whatever that is on your beam. But that A right down there, we should put like A star, okay? Because it's not just any cross-sectional area, it's a special one, and it goes like this, okay? It is this web but extend the web all the way to the top of the part. So in your wide flange beam tables, this is called TW, okay? For thickness of the web, okay? And then this, from here to here, is called D. That's called the depth of the beam. And so that A down there at the bottom on this shortcut method is TW times D. And again, those two values there, you can just look them straight up on the table, right? On, on Appendix B in your book. I thought I had a book behind me, but I don't. Okay, and so that right there, here's your A right there. And it goes all the way to the very top and the bottom of the beam. And that's a shortcut method for I-beams to calculate uh, tau. It, what's, the, what's the maximum tau on my beam, okay? So there's a couple of little shortcut methods. Like I said, the next example problem we're going to do is going to incorporate all of this stuff in one problem. But I thought I'd come on and explain what the heck is going on. How, why can we use that kind of stuff? And so I hope this makes sense. So let's see this stuff in action. Join me on the next video. Here we go.